the post-Civil War years of the early 1870s, the state of Texas was still very much frontier land. Because of its fertile agricultural landscape, it offered great opportunities to those seeking legitimate livelihoods in farming, ranching, and mercantilism. However, because of its vastness, it also became an ideal place for those looking to escape debt, the weariness of war, and the law. Texas in the 1870s still had a frontier to it. Up to that point in time, law enforcement officials really were not adept at chasing down bad guys. As a result, it was fertile ground for outlaws and bad guys to come and find a good hideaway and camp out. This particular case that I'm kind of looking into right now involves a guy named Sam Bass. Mm -hmm. Some people call him the Robin Hood of the West, that he stole from the rich and gave to the poor. And I also know that his reign was short, apparently. Then he must have been quite infamous. He must have been quite successful. Well, yeah, well, yeah I mean, a lot of them were like that, weren't they? Wasn't Jesse James pretty short-lived and uh, yeah. a lot of these guys? I think Sam Bass fits exactly in that world of somewhere in the middle of hero and villain, I guess. In 1869, Indiana native Sam Bass made his way to Texas at the young age of 18 with initial plans of pursuing a virtuous vocation. Sam Bass had been uh, attracted to the state of Texas with tales of cowboying and ranching and a certain amount of glamour that he saw associated uh, with this. After a successful stint in horse racing, which earned him a taste of small-time fame, Bass transitioned into herding cattle, hoping it would lead to greater success in ranching. However, the grueling physical labor and meager pay prompted him to consider other, more daring ways to earn a living. Sam Bass, uh, he made friends with a man named Joel Collins. And Collins came up with the idea of putting together a herd and the whole notion of being successful cattle ranchers. But that didn't pay off, and they ran out of money pretty quick, and he turned to stage robbery. Some way of getting money. But Sam Bass, being an entrepreneurial sort, thought that there was probably a better way to do this, and he focused on trains. Bass set his sights on a station for the Union Pacific Railroad in Big Springs, Nebraska. And on the evening of September 18, 1877, he and his gang pulled off one of the boldest train robberies in history. So they picked Big Springs, and they waited for it to come into the station. They broke the telegraph machine that the operator had in the station and then went aboard. Once inside the train, Bass and his men headed to the express car, where valuables would commonly be kept. Although they were unable to open the safe because of a time lock, they found three boxes sitting next to it unprotected. Upon opening one, they were astonished to discover that it was filled with gold coins. They made off with uh, $60,000 worth of uh, freshly minted 1877 $20 gold pieces. According to most estimates, this fortune would be worth nearly $6 million today. They reached the point where it was in their best interest to split the loot and split up because it was clear that they were being pursued by law enforcement. Sam Bass got back to the Denton, Texas area, and he was smart enough to realize that it was dangerous to start spending these things, and so he buried them. And the legend goes that he buried them in four different caches, and after every robbery, he would add his share of the booty to one or more of those caches. I got contacted by two treasure hunters, um, this woman named Donna McCauley, mm -hmm. and this woman named Shell Woods, who goes by the name Gypsy Jewels, which I love. <laughs> She's like a kind of a female Gary Drayton. She's a metal detectress. Oh, okay. She's great at what she does, and these two believe firmly that they are hot on the trail of a treasure stashed by Sam Bass in the 1870s sometime. OK. Well, that sounds Absolutely. like an interesting story. Absolutely. They're actually standing by. I've arranged a call. Do you want to talk to them and see Absolutely. if something you, you guys bet. want to pursue? Put them on the screen. Great. Hello, ladies. Yeah. Hello. Hello ladies. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Oak Island War Room. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you guys in person. Uh, which one is Donna and which one is Gypsy, please? I'm Donna McCauley. And I'm Gypsy. 
Pleasure to meet you. Very too. nice to meet you both. I'm Donna McCauley. I'm a treasure hunter and a historian. And I'm on the board with the Parker County Historical Commission. I'm Gypsy Jules. I've been treasure hunting almost all of my life. I've been metal detecting now for a little over 22 years. I met Donna through a mutual friend and we instantly connected through our love for metal detecting and treasure hunting. So, I, you know, I have to ask, it sounds like a pretty substantial treasure that could be found. Do you have any idea what it might be worth if you, if you were to come up with it? Those 1877 coins have to be pretty rare and there's not hardly any known out there. Uh, it's gonna increase the value because you would be able to trace that back to the actual train robbery. And we think it's worth 1.5 million, but because of it being museum quality, it could be worth 5 million or even more. Oh, wow. Well, that'd be worth it. That's worth a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maddie, it's right up your alley. Man. Right up your alley. Right? I am in. <laughs> you guys, can you put up with Maddie Blake helping you out down there? Oh, yes. We, we can't <laughs> wait to meet him. All right, perfect. Great. All right, well, uh, I'll coordinate with you ladies on my trip, and we'll see you in Texas. Sounds good to me. Let's find a time to go. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your help. Stay here to meet you. Three days after his meeting with the Lagina brothers on Oak Island, Maddie, Donna, and Gypsy arrive in the city of Springtown, where Sam Bass and his gang established one of two known hideouts back in the late 1870s. To conduct their search, Gypsy and Donna are using Garrett Ace Apex metal detectors, which can identify both ferrous targets, such as iron, and non-ferrous targets, such as silver or gold, as much as two feet beneath the ground. I'm also gonna be scanning for snakes. Okay, you scan for snakes, the mountain lions. Got a signal here. You do? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, Maddie, I'm saying that's about center. Okay. So. Yeah, it's first. a little bit of a different train than I'm used to, but. <laughs> it's not Oak Island? Not quite. Nice plug. Thank you. Oh, it's right, it's there. right there. Wow. Found something good. Is that it? Oh my God. What is it? Oh my God, look at that. Do we have some water or something? Oh my God, look at that. What is it? It's so smooth. It feels uh -huh. like, uh, it's almost, looks uh -huh. decorative. Oh, it's got a little green patina. Oh yeah, patina. Mm -hmm. It's got patina, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit that side again one more yeah. time. Now, what this could be is you came off see. of a saddle. Does this look like it's of the period to you? I think that's from the 1800s. You With do. the green patina, it could be. Wow. So this could be your first piece of evidence mm -hmm that they were here that they were here that right. sam bass's gang was here man i'm happy <laughs> me too i'm happy I'm so happy too and you hit it right there i mean Ooh. well let's let's put that in the pouch okay and let's now, uh, keep going fantastic so i'm just curious go straight up if, if up the hill right up there above that ridge if they might have camped there and went up there for lookout let's so. go Now, we definitely want to check around these rocks just in case they dug a little hole and rolled the rock right on top of the treasure. So. Got it. Like that? I've got a hit right here. Center right there? Right there. Man, I don't have to go to the gym today. Hard. Right? You're getting your workout. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Whoa! <gasps> what Let's is look at the size of that. Wow. What that is it? It's grown like up in the it rig. It was part of a, a shovel. Yeah. Uh, this would have been part of the uh, bottom piece of the shovel. But this is old. Look at the rivets on that thing. They look hand forged. Wow. My goodness. Do you think that's period? I do. I do. I do. And they could have used the shovel to bury their gold. I mean, they do not make shovels like that anymore. No. If these finds date where you guys think they do, mm -hmm. it's kind of irrefutable evidence that at least someone in Sam Bass's time frame was here, mm -hmm. which is huge. Sam Bass could have used this very shovel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting chills. That's Are you? what I'm thinking. 
All right, I think we've covered this area pretty well, pretty thoroughly. I did too.